This video tutorial covers working with north arrows and the direction north within QGIS. And to get started, let me just review the data that I'll be working with here in the tutorial. Um, to get started, I just have a folder called North Arrow. And within North Arrow, I have borough boundaries, and I also have administrative states and provinces. And the administrative states, take, it comes from um, Natural Earth. And this is a scale of 10 million. And the borough boundaries come from NYC Open Data. So here are the outlines of the borough boundaries. And we're going to use these two different scales to discuss how North Arrows are dealt with within QGIS. So before we get started, let's take a look at these features here. We're looking at a Google map uh, base map upon which the features are placed. And Google Maps essentially uses a true north orientation. There's three different orientations. There's a true north, a grid north, and also a magnetic north. And the true north and the grid north, um, there's not a terrible amount of difference between the two mapping at small scales. Um, when we get into magnetic north, then obviously there's a, a fairly big difference. When we're dealing with QGIS and we put in features, it's going to assume a grid north orientation. Okay, so we can kind of translate that into looking up or up north in the map. Um, so each feature that comes into the map as a default is going to be um, positioned uh, northwards. Okay, so to describe how that works, let's just go to, I'm going to make a favorites here. I'm in browser panel and I'm going to add my directory here for North Arrow. And within North Arrow, uh, let me remove this one. Let's just bring in states real quickly. So here comes states. This positioning, the default positioning here, is a rotation of zero, and it's just assuming that it's in a northward facing sort of grid north, true north positioning. Okay, so features that come into QGIS, you can assume that they're in um, their natural north orientation. And oftentimes that works perfectly fine for mapping at the scale, because this is what we're used to seeing is this northward orientation. The issue comes into play when we're actually mapping predominantly at a larger scale, say in New York City, and we want to change the map rotation um, to make a visual impression. A perfect example of this would be the NYC subway map, whose orientation has been shifted. And we're going to replicate that um, NYC um, subway map to describe how to do this whole process in QGIS. So to get started, let's let's um, Let's make two spatial bookmarks. Um, the spatial bookmark is going to be for this scale right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and put, put in large scale, large scale. And then I have another feature here under my borough boundaries for NYC. And let's go into layer panels now and bring that in. So what, let me, um, let me just drop this into the map. Okay. And I'm going to come back into the layers panel here. I'm just going to zoom to layer for New York. And we can see that not only are the features um, in this sort of um, laying off to the side position, um, which is a grid north or a grid north position within QGIS, um, we also see the map generalization that's taking place in the natural earth data. So we can see that if we're going to be mapping at a really large scale, we definitely want to be using the NYC features to capture all this rich detail along the shoreline here. So I'm going to make a bookmark at this scale. So I'll just call the next bookmark uh, NYC and underscore large scale. Just realized that I need to change my other one from large scale. That's actually not what it is. It's small scale. So let me change that bookmark, the name of it. So now what I can do is I can toggle in and toggle back out very easily. So the first mapping that we're going to do here in Print Composer is at our small scale. So let's go ahead and make a Print Composer. So we're going to go New Print Composer. First, let me go ahead and save my project. So I'm going to do Save As. I'm within the folder North Arrow. I'm just going to call this in a underscore test. And now I'm going to go into Print Composer here. And I'm going to call this test also. And I'm just going to simply, this is a 8.5 of 11 landscape sheet. We can see its composition over here. Um, we're going to keep all the composition defaults as they are. That's fine. We're going to drop in our map, add new map. He comes in, and you can see that he drops in the orientation of north. And we can move, move our 
map canvas around. Okay, that's all good and fine. Now what we want to do is actually put in a north arrow. So to do a north arrow, personally, this is my opinion, it's a bit redundant when you have a north orientation and you're putting a north arrow in. It's not redundant when you're actually changing the map orientation, which we'll do for New York City here in a moment. So just be aware that you know some cartographers will put in a north arrow for this orientation, some won't. Um, okay, so to do the north arrow itself, if I click on the map frame, that makes the item properties for map active. If I come back out and go to the icon for add image on the left hand side here and put that down, that's going to now give me a picture items property. And under the main properties, I have some options here. I have the SVG parameters, which is going to be the color and the outline width. I also have main properties where I can actually go find an image if I want to. Um, or I can search directories. So with search directories, there's some presets here, some defaults. And there's a couple of nice ones to use. There's this one right here, which is a modern, relatively modern North Arrow, very simple and clean. And there's also some cardinal roses, which will show you all directions. And that's not showing up very well right now because it's color, the color's not very good. Um, and then we also have some North Arrows that will show both um, the grid north of QGIS, but also the magnetic north um, also. So that's a possibility, especially for reference maps, if you want to add that in. So let's go back to it one more time. I'm going to draw, and then I want to go to my search directories, and I'm going to use this real simple uh, north arrow here. So he just comes in, and that's basically it. If you don't want to change the orientation itself of the actual feature, you basically could do your other map elements and print it just as it is with this north arrow. Um, this doesn't look very well designed. We would place it over in the corner and probably change the size of it and whatnot. Okay, so that's the default facing north. Here's the north arrow that comes into the print composer. So all good and well. Let's go back to our space here and zoom into New York City. So if we zoom to layer, uh, I'm going to get rid of the states here, re remove that, and I just want to be dealing with the five boroughs. I have a couple options here. Um, I can obviously change the scale if I want to. I can also double click to get into my preset spatial bookmark. And importantly, down here in the corner, I can start to rotate this. So here we go. We're going all the way around 360 degrees. We get around to about minus, let's see, minus uh, 30s, about 30. About 35 is, is pretty close to being what we would see in, say, the New York City subway map. So it has a very um, uh, upward standing positioning within the map. Now, what's important to do when we go into Print Composer is that the rotation that we have currently right now is not necessarily going to take hold while we're in Print Composer. So let's just go over to Print Composer and go to Test, make a Test 2, and say OK. And under test two, let's go ahead and drop in that particular map. So let me draw it out. There it is. It comes in. And we can see that I'm still in my original positioning. Okay, even when I set it to that rotationing, set it to the map at canvas extent. Um, this doesn't take precedent over here. And the big issue here in map canvas when we're working is sometimes we do want to change the orientation for working with imagery or editing features is some reason that we want to actually change the orientation to better suit the working environment that we're in. But when we go to print composer, then we're kind of really worried about actually printing the map itself and manipulating the north arrow to represent the rotation of the, of the canvas, the map canvas space within print composer. So we need to kind of think of it a little bit differently in this space. So here, what I want to do is actually change the map rotation. So we can see it sitting here. And if I want to start to rotate this, what I can do is I'm, I'm currently on the map. And if I push these little toggle buttons upwards, we can see that the rotation starts to change. And this can go on for a while. Let's go all the way down to like 320. So about 320 degrees there is getting close to what we want. Let's try 325. Maybe 330. 
five. That's a little bit too much, maybe 3.30. Oh, takes a few minutes to get this all right. Uh, it's not exactly what I want. Let's try 3.28. Still not exactly what I want. Let's try 3.25. That's pretty close. Let's try 3.22. That's just a little too much. <laughs> Uh, 325 is probably good enough. Okay, so uh, maybe I want to make the scale um, a little more large scale. Maybe change this to, let's see, let's change this to 25. Yeah. Let's see, try to change 15. We go down to 10. Uh, that's pretty close to what I want. I'm going to make this. One more zero. This is this is pretty decent for for what we're doing right now, and so if I want to just print Manhattan itself separate of all the other boroughs, I could do that. I would have to actually extract out Manhattan. I haven't done that, so we're just going to use this particular expression right now as the example. And currently, I have changed the map rotation three to 325 degrees here on 360. And what I want to do now is add in a north arrow and start to position the north arrow correctly. So the way that I do that is I go to Add Image, put him on top, and I'm going to go to my search directory for picture. I'm going to get in my modern north arrow. And once I do that, I'm in the situation where he's still facing upwards, not in the current map rotation. And I have a couple options here. I can click to sync with the map. So as I do that, we can see that the 325 degrees comes in. And it also tells me what type of north alignment do I want. Do I want true north or grid north? And so the default is grid north. And if I say true north, there's not just not a, not a big difference. Grid North is kind of the default that we can use that will be fine for our purposes here. So what this allows us to do now, if a map user is using our map, they know that we've changed the North orientation to its current position. And we've shown that with the North arrow itself, importantly, syncing it with the map. Okay, the other option is, is that we could click off sync map and I could put zero back in and then I can go in and just do it by hand. That's the other option, 325, and put it in. But I kind of need to know, if I'm doing it by hand, what I originally changed the orientation of the map frame itself. So as a process, it's best to put the map in, do your orientation, and then either sync with the map or change it by hand for your actual rotation of your north arrow. Okay? so. Hopefully this is helpful in large scale mapping when you're definitively changing the map orientation. If you're mapping at a smaller scale, at a global scale, and you're just assuming that you're working within QGIS's um, default grid north orientation, um, from my perspective personally, it's not as critical to have the north arrow in the actual map page. But again, if you're changing the orientation from the grid north, you definitely really need to include the north arrow.